But I don't want to promise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. Draw me nearer, God, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. visitors and she said wait until they get him into the rehab it'll be easier to visit him there so after tomorrow I would say if you wanted to try and visit if you want to just text or call Nora first or just go by the rehab which I'm not sure where that is but anyway that's the latest on Odell I was fully unaware of that situation I guess I just didn't need to know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good to see everyone this morning. Welcome back. Yes, it's good to be back. I uh, had a wonderful time. Um, very heartfelt. Very heartfelt. I was still crying in the airport. <laughs> I'm, I'm a crier, in case you didn't know. And my wife cried with me this time. It was good. It was good. She did. That was really sweet of her. She cried with me. Gotcha. Uh, so, uh, just uh, I, I'd love to get you caught up on some of the things that uh, I did, but right now I just want to say welcome to everyone. Glad that you have all made it. I know it looks like quite a few are out. I know the Savoys are traveling. Um, I don't know. My brother Odell is, I just found that out. He's getting. Uh, different kind of care. Um, 
let's just re be, be reminded of uh, this opportunity that we have, that God has given us to worship Him. God has placed it on our hearts to be here. We even had someone who was here at 8.30 this morning, knocking on the door, wanting to, wanting to worship this church open. I had to say, well, it is, but come back and we'll let you in. Um, just, you know, giving all glory and honor to God for another opportunity. I know that when I go to these conferences, I see worship in a whole different, different perspective. But those folks back there in the South, they do things differently. Um, and it's a good thing. I said, boy, if Foster Road could see me now. And I was, <laughs> yeah. And it, it was it was refreshing. It was it was airy. It was wonderful. Just to you know, when you have a little bit of tension built up inside of you, you know what I mean, and you can just let it out. You know, anybody know what I'm talking about? When you when you just want to scream sometimes. Not that I was screaming. No one doing that. Uh, and you can just let it out, and it feels good just to be able to express yourself like that. All for uh, under the auspices and under the power and the conviction of the Holy Spirit. It was just a fabulous, fabulous time. And um, <clears throat> talk to me about it sometime. I'd love to share some things with you. Uh, I've learned a few things about a few things, and I will be having some discussions with you uh, regarding those things that I learned. Um, just want to remind us to silence our cell phones during this time. Um, next CEO event, Christians Eating Out. It's coming up, Cool Hand Loops, November the 14th. That is this Tuesday, is that right? This Tuesday, let Ginger know so she can be sure to include you in the count. And uh, is this a testimony? No, resignation. Resignation. Oh, my goodness. How long have you gone? I, you know, <laughs> nobody, nobody tells me anything. I'm going to turn this light off here. No one calls. Uh, oh my lord. It's in the bulletin. It's inserted in there. Okay. All right. My brother Wayne Barbara has decided to resign from his uh, position of elder. He had discussed it with me actually, so it's not a surprise. It's just that I didn't know that it was it had gotten to this point. Yeah. Uh, so let's you know, read it. Um, if I know, if you know anything about our brother Wayne, this was not an easy decision for him, I'm sure, uh, because he loves the church and he loves fellowship and he loves he loves the Lord. And um, and just read through the letter. Uh, I'm sure that you will understand. Um, focus on faith. I want to remind us or, and encourage us to remember our focus on faith. Anybody? begun penning anything, writing anything. You know, I just want to say this. This focus on faith, this scripture that it's, it's written here, Hebrews 10, 22, 24, says, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith. Full assurance. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. And let us consider, here's the phrase, how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds. One thing I, I love about testimonies, and you know, they can be difficult sometimes to, to verbalize in our spirit, because some of them are a little tough. You know, it, it calls us to remember some things that are not so, you know, that we wanted to forget about. Um, but it doesn't have to be those. I shared a testimony this morning about, you know, my calling to be a, 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 a preacher, a minister here. And um, it was a very, you know, it was powerful for me, but it, it didn't hurt because it wasn't about, you know, anything that, that I had done or anything. It was just about me putting my trust and my faith in God. Mm -hmm. That's it. And I hope that, you know, through my testimony, that somebody was blessed by it. Here's the thing about testimonies. You can argue, we can discuss and debate about scripture, understanding, 
exegesis and, and theology. But we can't argue about your testimony. That's your testimony. No matter what it is, it's, it's about you. It's about your relationship, your encounter, your experiences with God. How God has maybe freed you from yourself so that you can walk in the light a little bit more. Put your trust in him a little bit more. More of him and less of self. And that other song goes. Mm -hmm. Let us just, you know, this should be something that we can, we can all embrace. And I, I mean, joyfully embrace it. I don't want it to be like, you know, taking your nails and scratching them across a chalkboard. You know what that sounds like? If we have one in here, I demonstrate it for you. And you, everybody said, no, we don't need it. So you understand what I'm talking about. It shouldn't be like that. You know, it's like, oh my Lord, I mean, you know, it's like, whatever we do, do it all for the glory of God, right? So if, if, if God, if, if, if you say, if, if, if the call comes, you know, to, we need somebody to move the chairs, you know, set up tables, let's, you know, chime in and do it joyfully, you know, with the, with the song in our heart. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled the you get my point? Not, oh man, this is, I got a You know, not like that. You get what I'm saying? So this is, this is an opportunity for us to, to demonstrate our love for God. We do it all for God. We don't do it for, you're not doing it for me. You're doing it for God. Amen. Isn't that right? Well, whatever it is, do it for God. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for anybody else. We're doing it for God. Right? And that should hopefully lighten the load. Take the focus off of each other. Yes, we're all going to be, you know, uh, uh, beneficiaries of, of our good deeds. But we do it for the, for, for the Lord. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Okay, enough said on that. Anything else that we have, um, let us take it to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to come together, to bow down, to prostrate ourselves before you, Father, to lift up holy hands and proclaim your goodness and your magnificence, giving you the glory for all things that uh, go on in our lives, leaning on you for our understanding, praying for those who are not here this morning, praying for our brother Odell, who's uh, needing some medical attention, praying for healing, praying for comfort and peace for his wife and himself. Praying for our brother Wayne, uh, praying for our brother Gary uh, Roberts. We just, there's just so many. Uh, our, our sister who uh, has, has had surgery uh, here recently. Um, yeah, Melissa and then the other one, Lori. Lori and Atha. Yeah, and Atha. Atha, Atha Janice. So there's just so much going on. Thanking you for those that you have allowed to be healed and, and to bring to come back and fellowship with us, like our sister Joyce. Thanking you for watching over those who are traveling so that they can come back and bless us uh, with some stories and with just some, some examples of how good God is that you've been to them, Father, during their travels. Thanking you for this time that you've given us to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. Be with us. Open our hearts, be in our presence, Father. Let everything that is said and everything that is done this morning, Father, be to glorify you. May the focus be on you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, uh, there was a, there's, there's a, uh, an, an hearing aid that was found. It's been over here. If anybody, if this is, it's here. If, it, if it's yours, or if you know whose it is. Okay? All right. Pray for all our eyes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh. Use hymn books, number 667.
Let's do verses 1, 3, and 4. 1, 3, and 4. Savior, thy dying love, thou gavest me, nor should I not withhold, dear Lord, from thee. In love my soul would bow, my
bread and the the vine. Um, The bread, you know, it represents the body of Christ, and I think we look at it each and every week, and as long as we reflect on the significance of both, the the blood as well as the body, I think we can really find the value each and every week. Um, We're to be thankful, you know, um, for our bodies, for what he's been able to do through us, and just being present on this earth, right? Whether we're here in person or in spirit. And um, it's, a, it's an honor, honestly, to be able to partake in this because then you understand the weight that it holds each and every week and being selfless at that point, you know, because God was selfless when he gave up um, his life for us. So let's take the, the bread and bow our heads. Give us something, Father. Thank you for just being present with us each and every day nourishing our bodies, uh, our minds, our souls, and really just oversee all those people that we are looking for, um, guidance, health, and just protection at the end of the day. And uh, of course, I want to thank the, the veterans, of course, because we just had that since Veterans Day, but uh, for those who have laid there in their life for us and done one of the hardest things to do, right? And I uh, just pray that we look over them nourish their bodies. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now the body we have just taken, and we'll move on to the blood, which I think is really uh, symbiotic, because it flows through each and every one of us, you know, every single day. You don't really have to think about it, right? You know, like, uh, it's there. But uh, when we take this, it just reminds us, like I said before, of what he's doing through us, whether we see it or not. You know, we can see the body, we don't always see the blood. And if you do, like, that away. No, I'm just kidding. Let's keep it inside. But I would say with the blood of the Christ, you can do powerful things. He he heals and uh, he shows it every single day. And I just want to say, you know, that is uh, something powerful that you don't see it, but it does miraculous things as he does every day. Amen. Mm-hmm. So you bow with me. Give him Father, thank you for the, uh, the blood that you've shed for us to be here, to be in this community and to just thrive through you as we do our daily works to get closer and closer to you at the end of the day. And we pray that we do a great job and we are a humble servant of your work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Songbooks number 712. Let's stand for this song and remain standing for the reading. Troublesome times are near, filling his hearts with cheer. Freedom we all own dear, now is that stay. Humble your heart to God, saves from the saving rot. Soon on the world ground trot, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon, many will meet there. The good shall rise, branches be in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Love of so many cold, losing their home of gold. This is the word is told, evils abound. Nearing the end of 
chapter, and the verses are 25 through 32. The Bible reads, For I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery, so that you will not be wise in your own estimation, that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, just as it is written. The Deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them. When I take away their sins, from the standpoint of the gospel, here we go, they are enemies for your sake. But from the standpoint of God's choice, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrev irrevocable. I think I said that right. For just as you once were disobedient to God, but now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience, so these also now have been disobedient that because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. For God has shut up all in disobedience so that he may show mercy to all. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this time of reflection. Allow the Spirit to speak through me, Father. Allow your word to be proclaimed, Father. Give us ears to understand, and hearts to be transformed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Kindly be seated. You won't get a lot of slides this week. You may have noticed in your bulletin that there is no sermon guide also. Not because I was, you know, unavailable, didn't have time. It's just that, um, I believe that I had to take a step back from two weeks two weeks ago when I last spoke here prior to leaving for my conference. I read from the text of Romans chapter 12 and forward. Romans chapter 12, if you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter 12. Beginning at verse number one, and you won't see this up here. I'm going to ask you 
to open your Bibles. There are some Bibles on the counter if you don't have one. There are some here. If you need a Bible, they're around. They're available. If you have it on your cell phone, that's a wonderful thing as well. I'm going to ask you to turn to a few, a few verses just for clarification. Before I get into that, I want to welcome visitors. It looks like we have visitors. I don't know you. You don't know me. Uh, my name is Mark. It's good to see you. You've been here before. No? First time? Ah, okay. Well, if you're, if it's, well, what's your name? Leah. Leah. We have another. Leah left and Leah right. <laughs> we have another one. Well, and Maddie. Maddie. Friends of family. 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 Oh, that's right. Heavy's gone. Oh, you poor girl. <laughs> and then we have more visitors. You've been here before. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Someone that looks like, what, what's your name? Uh, my name is Roman. Roman? Yes. Oh, well, we're in the book of Romans here. How about that? And this is your family here, Roman? Yes, yeah, this is my grandma, Martha. This is my dear Cynthia. She's busy with um, Virginia. I live nearby here, and I just wanted to ask my grandma, so, you know, I want to come check out the church and see what it's all about. Oh, <laughs> praise the mighty name of Jesus. Praise him. Well, you know, we are who we are. Um, what you see is, uh, you know, who we are. We are a loving bunch. We believe in, you know, teaching from the Bible. We believe in letting the Bible speak where it speaks and being silent where it's silent. And, you know, all those things, right? Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Uh, but we're a loving congregation, so we welcome you. Uh, pray that this will be a blessing to you. Um, you know, I, I better be on better behavior then. I think I better. <laughs> you know, just a little bit, just a little bit, because I do want you to come back and visit. So, you know, we are moving in. Oh, our building. I, I went in there this morning. Wow, they were, they've been busy. Have you all seen it? Oh, my goodness. After services, I want to open it up if anybody wants no. to see. Uh, no, you we, we can't go in. Oh, we can't. Yeah, you can't. I'm sorry, I was waiting for the there, 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 There's stuff everywhere, tools. Yeah, they, they're going to have and, uh, glue and, and, yeah. and, and, and uh, tools. And they, they rather we don't go in. And it's, it's better because you, I, week. we want you to be wild by the finished <laughs> by the finished product. You're going to be like, whoa, this is pretty. It smells differently in there. You know, wow. It's like, you know, you walk into a different world. It's like, uh, anyway, uh, what a blessing it will be. Hopefully, prayerfully, maybe we can be in there the week of Thanksgiving, you think? I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Let's, 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 it, it'll be close. Either way, the end is near. Um, so thanking God for that blessing. As I was saying, um, Romans chapter 12 Verse number one says, therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice. That's an imperative. This is what he wants us to do, to present our bodies by the mercies of God as a, as a, um, as a living and holy sacrifice. Um, and it sounds like if you said that to someone, they, everybody would say, amen, we can do that. Well, do we really understand what that means? Do we really understand what it means? First question. Uh, and then it says in verse number two, it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may what? Prove what the will of God is. Oh, he's just getting started. He's just, he's just getting started. Uh, and, 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 and I want to read because I, I started this scripture, I began teaching from this scripture, and up to the point to where he began to talk about um, the gifts in verse number six. He says, in verse number six, he says, since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. If prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. And he goes on, it's your, your verse, may say the faith, mine says his faith, but it really should be the faith. Uh, and he goes on to talk about service, if serving, you know, how to serve, if, how to teach, 
In other words, kind of like that attitude that I was talking about, you know, when you move chairs, if, if, if you're going to be a chair mover, then you be, a, be the best, give glory to God in, in your ability to move chairs, whatever it is. Um, but these are specific gifts, teaching, uh, um, um, uh, being liberal, he says in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Oh, that's a good one. And he says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that which is evil and cling to what is good. So I began going, you know, expounding on that, bringing out some, some very prominent and very uh, difficult, I believe, passages for us to understand. Yes, I said they're difficult for us to understand. Because I believe that we sometimes throw out words and texts and we use words without really understanding the the significance of what he's talking about. You see, we have to understand one thing, that the Bible um, in its context was not written to us, but it was written for us. He was writing to an audience, a group of Christians, it wasn't us, at least I wasn't there, and I don't think anybody else in here was there. But the words that he wrote that were written, they're for us as well. So it helps us to really understand then in context what it is that he's trying to convey. Because we can make it mean a whole lot of things, right? Isn't that right? If, 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 if like, like the passage that says uh, um, uh, in, in verse number seven, it says, if service in his serving or he who teaches in his teaching. You know, what does it mean to be in service for the Lord? Hmm. Uh, there's a difference, let me just say this, between a ministry and community service. There's a difference between the two, between a ministry and community service. Community service, as an example, because this service is doing something of benevolence for somebody within the community. Why? To make the community better. And a ministry is the same, doing something of benevolence um, for somebody else uh, to make the kingdom of God better. Difference. Um, I'm going to say this. Service is good news, but it's not good news. <laughs> Let me explain. Doing things for people is good news. We can hand out backpacks, we can feed people, we can you know, stand on the corners, and you know, we can do all kinds of stuff, but it's not good news. Good news, in other words, service without the good news, which is that Christ uh, died for us, was, was, was resurrected and rose on the third day for our sins so that we could be redeemed back to God. That's the good news. So community service and doing things absent that perspective or absent that detail is just good news. It's not the good news. Amen. And so we just need to understand, have a, have a different perspective and, and an, an enlightened perspective on what he's talking about. So I decided, because in, whenever you see like in chapter 12, verse number one, what's the first word? Therefore. When you see therefore, you gotta go backwards to understand what he's gonna say going forward. You just have to. And so, hence, we are now in chapter 11. Chapter 11, and further back, I could go all the way back, but I don't want to because of time. And I, I just want you to understand this. What he's saying, what he has, what he's bringing to life, what he's trying to communicate in chapter 11, he's trying to, to make you aware, if you have your Bibles, turn to chapter 11, book of Romans, because we're going to read a few passages. He's trying to make the reader aware, you Christians and believers aware, and even those, those who are reading the text, of who you are, as opposed to, in contrast to who you, who you were. In other words, you really can't understand who you are 
until you understand who you were. You know, am, I, am I making myself clear? You, 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 you really can't appreciate who you are today unless you understood, understand who you were. You know, I, I, can, I can put it to you this way. We sit here today in this building, but years ago, this building wasn't here. There was just a, a plot of land. It took some things to happen in the past. I wasn't here, but there are some of you that were here, and you saw this building go up. It took some things to happen, some sacrifices that need to be made, some commit that were made, some commitments, some work, some explore, exploration, all of that for us to sit in this building. And if we just sit in this building and just say, oh, we have a nice place, and you know, we really don't appreciate this place for what it is until we think about the work that went in for this building to be here. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about you and your families. Uh, think about, uh, I'm just trying to make it clear to us, think about you and your families. You know, your grandparents and your great-grandparents. I mean, I, I'm just going to go that far because we can go back even further than that. You know, when, when well, I'm just going to say it. When you look at the demographics of this country, a lot of us aren't from this country. Uh, you know, your great-great-grandparents and your great great you came here from somebody else. It took some sacrifices. It took some things to happen, and it wasn't easy for them. You know, I was watching the movie about, uh, I don't even know the name, it was a strange movie, but it was about uh, uh, during the time of slavery. And I, and I don't, I didn't think about this because I typically, you know, have a difficult time. I've heard all the stories, at least I've thought about it, but I never really considered this until watching this movie. There was a, it started out with the, the emancipation and slaves were freed, right? After the Civil War. And they were let, they were let go. Now you've got no place to, head, to, to sleep. Now you've got, so what do they do? Where do you go? And it started out with this person just wandering, you know, wandering around. Now that's some feeling for you. That's some reality for you. But it took perseverance or whatever happened, I'm going to just say it in order for me to stand here today. I don't know what might happen to my ancestors. I don't know. But you get my point. There were some sacrifices. So until I can really appreciate and look back on, huh, watch this, the darkness, I can't really appreciate the light. You can't. You just can't. Um, you know, we have... Uh, for us to, to, to really ponder the situation, it really requires us to consider the dark times, to consider who we were prior to being uh, um, walking in the light, uh, to consider who we were prior to having our sins forgiven. You know, I shared with you that, um, that uh, you know, I was still crying in the airport. And, you know, my wife knows me. And she's sitting right next to me and we're facing the window. Nobody can see us. There's a gazillion people all around. But as I'm talking, she knows. And, uh, and she says, you okay? I said, well, you know, it's just that when I think about who I was, Who I was and who I am now, it just makes me feel a certain way. Isn't that right? Um, and here's the reason why. When you love someone that you hurt, when you love God, and you know you do things contrary to his will, it hurts. If you don't love him, if he's just some far off entity, you know, just, ah, he's God, he can handle it. <laughs> He'll get over it. No, it's not about that. If God really occupies the space in your heart, if you can say, I love you, 
hurts. It makes you feel a certain way. <clears throat> I thought I was done with this. And it's not that I'm a horrible person and continue to do horrible things and all that. No, that's not what I'm saying. Um, it's just that sometimes it's good for us to remember. Uh, turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Deuteronomy chapter 32. And this is what we have to guard against. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I read a few verses of this this morning. And I'll just paraphrase up until verse number 15. The Bible says, Moses gathered the congregation of Israel before him and said, hear, hear ye my words. And he's telling them about how the goodness of God, about the good things that God has done. He says in verse number seven, remember the old, the days of old. 32 verse number seven, remember the days of old, consider the years of all generations. Ask your father and he will inform you, your elders and they will tell you. And then he goes on to say, to, to talk about all the good things, how God took care of them in the wilderness. Took care of them, hovered over them like, a, like an eagle in, a, in, a, in, 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 in the nest. And, and did all of these things, encircled them in, in verse number 10. Uh, the Lord, in verse number 12, the Lord alone guided him, and there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride in the high places of the earth, and he ate the produce of the field, and he made him suck honey uh, from the rock and oil from the flinty rock, curds of cows, all these good things, right? Verse number 15 is where it all changes. Verse number 15 says, but Jeshurun, well, some would probably say Israel, they grew fat and kicked. He says, and now he's speaking, he says, you are grown fat, thick and sleek. And when that happens, what happens when you don't, you know, you get complacent. You get, you know, you 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 don't need anything. You know, everything's good. You know, you don't have to work. There's no struggle. Isn't that right? Do, do, do we not get comfortable? You know, the, everything's that we got everything we need handed to. We know that we have a provider who's watching over us. He got fat. Then he forsook God and made him uh, and scorned the rock of his salvation. Verse 16. They made him jealous with strange gods. Strange gods with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed uh, uh, to demons who were not God, to gods whom they have not known, and so on and so on. In other words, they forsook God. They turned their 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 attention and their and their their gratitude from God and placed them in something else. And that what we do today? We get busy doing other things. We just you know, I, I mentioned this morning, oh, Lord, help me with this, uh, that, you know, I would love to have a church full of disciples instead of members any day. Because disciples will do the work of God. Members are kind of like volunteers. You know what I mean? Volunteers don't like to be inconvenienced. Disciples, doesn't matter what it is. God is calling, I'll be there. And, and that's just, you know, this is one of the things that, that they hit me with. I'd say, ooh, and I, where am I in that? Ooh, I had to look at myself. You know, how committed am I truly to God? And, and what is it then that causes us to, causes one to, to avoid being so uh, in, in a place of, of complacency? What is it? Because this is this is what happened. What, what happens? Um, uh, go to Proverbs chapter thirty. I mean chapter twenty-four. Proverbs twenty-four. We're going to read verse number thirty. This is this is this is what happens. This is what happens to us. So it helps us to remember who we are. I'm just trying to, to help us here. Okay. This might hurt a little bit, but you'll be blessed by it. 
Verse number 30 of Proverbs chapter 24. The Bible says, I passed by the field of the slugger and by the vineyard of the man lacking sense. And behold, it was completely overgrown with thistles. This is how complacency, this is what happens when complacency creeps in. We, we don't, you know, deliberately say this. Well, you might. I'm just going to do my thing, God. But, you know, we can have the best intentions sometimes. And it says, its surface was covered with nettles and its stone wall was broken down. When I saw, I reflected upon it. I looked and received instructions. Here we go. This is the explanation. A little sleep, a little slumber. Uh, we were sleeping in a little slumber. A little folding of the hands to rest. Then your poverty will come as a rock. Is that what it says? And your want like an armed man. You see, it doesn't just happen sometimes. We can have the best intentions, but when we aren't fully committed to God, it can just creep in. Turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm getting there. I, 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 I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm getting there without really getting there. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, uh, beginning reading at verse number 3. I believe that's it. Now that was the creeping part. How complacency sets in. Where we slowly forget about God. In favor of doing other things. You know, it, it's kind of like this. Remember the pandemic? Remember the pandemic? How we didn't shake hands with each other. Didn't hug each other. We'd elbow each other and stuff like that. Forgot what a handshake felt like. Right? And then once we once we went back to shaking hands, it was different. Boy, it was embracing and hugging and shaking hands. I was like, I wasn't quite sure. You know what I mean? It just felt strange. Don't let God, your walk with God, become like that. How about this? Or the time when, because of the pandemic, you, places didn't accept cash. You didn't accept cash. So what did you have to use? A credit card. Everywhere you went, you could have all the cash in your pocket. I had cash that I forgot about I even had. It got washed in the laundry several times and, you know, you know, because I just never use it, you know, hundred dollars here, five dollars there. You know, if I needed money, I'd just go look in my pockets when I finally, I went through all my pants and found like $150 <laughs> because I never needed it, right? It just felt strange and it happened because we used something else as a substitute. Something else took its place, okay? This is how it happens in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 3. He says, but immorality or any impurity or greed must not even be named among you as is proper among the saints. And there must be no filthiness and silly talk and so forth and so forth. In other words, this is where we invite it in. It's not a creep. We invite the stuff in, right? And then in verse number 7, what's the response? He says, therefore... Do not be partakers with them, for you were formerly darkness. Here we go. You were formerly darkness, but now you are what? Light in the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists of in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Isn't that right? Walk in the light. Here we go. Now I'm about to just for a few minutes. Walking in the light. Oh, it sounds glamorous. It sounds an eloquent statement. It sounds, you know, joyful. It sounds like something that Christians would say because it's in the Bible. Well, what is it to walk in the light? Well, it's hard to, to know what light is, to what it is to walk in the light 
I mean, to really walk in the light if you don't have a relationship with the light. A relationship to the point to where you know about the light. You know how it operates. You know uh, um, its, its purpose in your life. You know the manifestations of it in your life. How about this? I'll make it plain. That switch on the wall over there. We understand that we walk over there and flip on that switch. It comes on, as long as we paid our electric bill. <laughs> it comes on, isn't that right? So we have that kind of relationship. That light is, is you flip on the switch and it's, it's on. But the reality of it is, is that what we see is light, but that light is going off and on at 60 times per second. Did you know that? It's on, it's off, it's on, it's off. It's just that it's on and off so fast that you see it as it being on all the time, but it's not that way. Having a relationship with Christ is such that we understand that when the Bible says, walk in the light for he is light, we understand that we depend on him. And if we are to be actually like he is in the light and walk in the light, there's a purpose for that, then we are to put on Christ. In other words, we have to take on the properties and the, and the characteristics of that light, or we won't be the light. We won't, I mean, we can say, I'm the light of the world. You can walk around, Santa Maria says, glory to God, I'm the light of the world. Well, are you really? Are you acting? You can say what you want, but are you really demonstrating that you understand what it is to, to be the light? That's the question. You can't really understand that if you just focus on the phrase, I am the light, and the goodness of God. In other words, you can't really appreciate your today until you, to, to, until you reflect and understand who you were yesterday. You just can't do it. So in our text, in verse number 25, he says, I do not want you, brethren, to be uninformed of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own estimation. He doesn't want us to have this hmm, arrogance about us, our own self-righteousness about us. Steer clear of self-righteousness because that's the work of, of the devil. Uh, in, in, in Romans chapter 1, in, in verse number um, in verse number 16, Romans chapter 1, verse number 16, it says, um, it says uh, in, in verse number 17, it says, For the righteousness, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. In what? The gospel. The righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So that's the righteousness that we should pursue, is the righteousness of God, not our own self-righteousness. And when we do anything else, then we are engaged in what he says uh, in, in verse number 25. He says, I do not want you, brother, to be uninformed of this mystery so that you will not be wise in your own estimation. That's self-righteousness. We need to understand God's righteousness. Isn't that right? And, 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 and it's very easy to get caught up in our own righteousness of things. Let's keep reading. Uh, he says, here's, here's the mystery that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. Now, this requires a little explanation because in that text that I read to you in, in Deuteronomy <laughs> chapter 32, uh, he went on to say about how he was going to, because they had, they had forgot about who, who, you know, what, what God had done for them that he was going to make them jealous by bringing in a foreign people and, and doing some things, some great things for these, these strange people. Isn't that right? And here in this text, Paul brings that out in, in, in Scripture because it goes on to say in chapter 11 and verse number uh, um, uh, 18, he says, do not be arrogant towards the branches. He gives this explanation about how the, the tree and the vines or, or the, the branches, uh, Israel were products of this tree the, and, and the root system and all of that. And then because of their disobedience, they were broken off. And you were grafted in. 
you Gentiles were grafted in. So now you can be part of the same tree. But don't get all huffy and puffy and blown up and arrogant because, you know, feeling all, you know, that, that, that you're superior than them and, and looking down upon them. Because he says that, you know, they were broken off for your benefit. Isn't that right? Yes, he says they were broken off for your benefit. And, and because they were broken off for your benefit, uh, that, that you, should, you should be mindful of that. You, you, you shouldn't look down upon them. Don't get all uh, uh, greater than thou and so forth. Uh, in verse number 26, he says, and so all Israel will be saved. Israel is going to be saved. Uh, remember uh, who was it, Elijah, when uh, he uh, ran from uh, uh, Jezebel, yes, because of his encounter with uh, uh, Ahab, right? And he killed all of, all of her prophets and all that. And then when he ran and, and, and God, he, God finally came to him, he says, and, and, and I am the only one that's left. Everyone else has been killed. And I'm the only one that's left. And God had to set him straight. He says, no, you're not, because I've saved 700. In other words, there's always going to be a remnant. In, in, in spite of, in spite of you know, your disobedience, our disobedience, there's going to be a remnant. God knows what he's doing. Isn't that right? So for you to say that I'm the only one left, no, you don't, 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 don't ever take that posture, okay? Um, and he goes on to say a few other things. The point is, is this. Uh, let's drop down to verse number, and, I'm, and I'll finish this. I know, but you all, you know, I've been two weeks away, you know, so you got to get two weeks worth of me now. I, got, I still got another 40 minutes. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, he says in 28, he says, from the standpoint of the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. Those uh, who are unbelievers that worship other gods, they're enemies for your sake. He says, but from the standpoint of God's choice, they are beloved for the sake of the fathers. He kept his promise. He, the, the covenant is still in place. He says, 29 says, for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevo irrevocable, irrevocable. For just as you once were disobedient to God, isn't that right? But now have been shown mercy because of their disobedience, isn't that right? So these also now have been disobedient, but because of the mercy shown to you, they also may now be shown mercy. God is a, is a wonderful God. God knew what he was doing. He had this plan from the beginning. He said, for God has shut up all in disobedience that he may show mercy to all. In other words, I'm no better, they're no better because they've fallen, we all fall. The Bible says we all have fallen, fallen short of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the righteousness of God. Isn't that right? We are all sinners. I mean, and if you think you're not, just think about forgiveness. Forgiveness. And this is where I get a little emotional because God has forgiven me many times. Isn't that right? And he's forgiven you many times as well. So for us to get to a point to where we now want to be the judge, the executioner, and, and, and you know, chop people's heads off and do all of that, and, you know, it, it makes no sense. It's ungodly. Forgiveness is such that... Um, Forgiveness is such that it's, 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 it's not about keeping score, but it's about losing count. That's forgiveness. Yeah. And so just think about the times that God has forgiven you. Amen. We need to be mindful of who we are, walking in the light. In order to do that, remember who we were. And all of this comes to us as a gift from God. None of us have earned and are deserving of any of this. We're not sitting here because we're just so good and righteous. We're sitting here because of just the opposite. Isn't that right? God didn't choose Israel or the nation, the children of Israel, Abraham and, and so forth, because they were just wonderful people. No, it didn't happen that way. No, and if you don't think that's true, then 
read scripture and it'll show you how he, he talks about it here and there and everywhere about how disobedient they were. That's us too. God knows what he's doing. We're going to get to these gifts because it's important for us to understand why he gave us these gifts, teachers, and, and to, to exhort one another, and prophets, and, 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 and all of these, pastors, you know, so that we can be fully equipped to do his work. We can equip each other. We have to, as it says, uh, to arm ourselves with the full armor of God. Those things that he talks about, all of these gifts, is to preserve his kingdom, to preserve and to grow his kingdom. That's what God wants, is for his kingdom to expand. And we'll talk about that next week, Lord willing. The message is simply that. The call is to come to God, to hear his calling, to hear him saying, um, to call, for repentance in your life, to accept him as the creator, to accept him as Lord in our life, to dedicate, and we may not even fully understand what that means when we do such a thing, not fully, but through our walk and through our getting to know God, we will get to know him and we'll understand. So if you would like to get to know God better, if you haven't put on Christ, accepted Christ as Lord in your life, accepted uh, the goodness and, and the incarnation of God um, as Lord in your life, and you'd like to, to investigate it or give your life to, 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 to Christ, um, yield to his will, to the will of the king uh, in favor of your will, then we invite you to do that. Uh, if you would like prayers and and for anything in your life. Now is the time to petition him and the saints so that we can all pray together. And that right? To God be the glory. We want to be workers and, and, and walk of children who walk in the light of, of, of in his kingdom. We're going to invite you to uh, request prayer. We're going to sing our song of invitation, which is... What a friend we have in Jesus. Thy princes fight for saying 